In this session will be moderated by President Jung Song Hyun of the Korea DMZ Peace Life Valley. Please welcome me with one round of applause. Oh, let me get my watch ready to check the time. Yes, um, good afternoon. I'm going to be a uh, moderator of this session. And, you know, always uh, there's a lot to talk about, but there is time constraints. So to presenters, please be mindful, mindful to finish your presentation within 15 minutes. And I do believe uh, then about um, 10 minutes or so to the panelists and then remainder uh, time for our uh, discussion. And something I want to say before we get started, about 18 months, ago, 18 years ago, that was 50 years since the armistice agreement of the Korean War. war. And personally, uh, after two months of getting my um, stomach uh, gastric cancer operation, um, I uh, prepared a big event uh, to go beyond war toward peace was the uh, theme. And at the time, we invited uh, foreign forces who fought in the Korean War. And at the time, we it was a three-day event. And uh, it was held uh, same as Yanggu and Punch Bowl. In Punchbo, about 2,000 people gathered, and in the first day of the event, I mean, we even had uh, the two representatives of PRC, and you know, from different countries, um, retired soldiers um, uh, gathered. And if I may share with you two things I heard from there, I think um, it would set context. One person that uh, fought all the way from, uh, as a soldier from South um, Africa said, war, um, there's no winner or loser, it's all uh, losers. And Republic of Korea, uh, even if you lose against, um, in dialogue with North Korea, I hope that you win in uh, peace. So I still remember because uh, the, that uh, comment was very impressive. Now, we, as I said, uh, there was a representative on from the uh, People's Republic of uh, China side, and uh, it was a, f a female representative, and uh, she joined a Red Army at the time when she was 40 years. And uh, she volunteered because she thought uh, they were they were helping um, uh, Korea. But now, thinking back, she thought it was all wrong. We just killed innocent uh, civilians. So she sincerely apologized. So we had veterans uh, commissions and other like um, people all gather here, and we really reached some kind of uh, reconciliation. And you know, uh, you know, uh, ex-soldiers from 13 countries that fought in Korean War really um, uh, said sorry to each other, and um, that really got us going to engage in active discussions and getting to know each other um, very well. That happened in here in Yanggu 18 years ago. It just uh, reminded of that um, coming back here. So. Today's uh, topic is about how to have uh, clear evidence of um, uh, we have clear evidence of division like DMZ. So how can we um, use that to create a kind of a belt of life that is sustainable? and how to use this for bilateral cooperation in the border area and in the MZ, uh, how can we cooperate to create a sustainable world? And what is important is that uh, we should do it together, but I simply I think we should do well from the south first. And if that goes well, 
then um, North Korea will be interested also, and then we join efforts, then we can really have a good results. And one thing, the talk about climate change, it's really become an urgent um, issue. And uh, maybe we are already late. Um, a few days later, COP16 um, meeting will be held in Scotland, and already dark cloud is hanging over that meeting. So uh, we need, uh, you know, participant participant from others, but let's do it uh, good by ourselves first. So with that, let's get the discussion going. Now we have uh, speakers from different areas. First, uh, let me invite, uh, I mean, Director Lee Yong from Korea Forest Service is going to talk about two Korea's cooperation in environment forest. And then um, Chief Research Fellow Chu Chang Min will talk about uh, cooperation from the environment uh, perspective. And he even did uh, environment project with China, so he would have a lot to tell us. And then from Beijing University, Professor Chang Seok Kwan uh, is, will talk about how to uh, get sustainable usage of the, the water system that crosses to, uh, two Koreas. And uh, Mr. Dam, uh, Kim Dam, is going to talk about uh, social and cultural aspects of um, cooperation. Uh, so he's uh, also very much into um, culture and uh, farming. So as a moderator, without asking for your understanding, I went a bit along. It's because I had a you know experience to share with you, and uh, we have limited time. So again, within 15 minutes, two speakers, and. Uh, Please uh, don't, I hope that uh, I don't have to intervene and tell you that uh, you have gone past your allotted time. I hope so, and by doing so, uh, we can have some time left to hear also from the audience. Let's get started. Let me first invite Director Lee yong of the Korea Forest Service to talk about how to do forest-related uh, cooperation in the DMZ and border area. 15 minutes, please. Thank you for that introduction. My name is uh, Lee yong -gwan, Director of uh, Forestry Cooperation uh, Division at the uh, Korea Forest Service. So in the uh, booklet, I have a very long uh, presentation, uh, but uh, in my actual talk, I'm going to focus on uh, a few key uh, points. Uh, before uh, moving on, I'd like to talk about three main points. First of all, what is sustainable forest ma main management? And uh, ways to enhance North Korea's acceptance and uh, understanding the DMC as a corridor uh, that can be used by both sides. So there are three pillars in the sustainable forest management. First, ecological. Second, economic. Third, social cultural. Uh, and they say striking a balance between these three pillars uh, should be the first step uh, in sustainable forestry management, or SFM. So uh, this is a five-chapter uh, presentation. Uh, so the uh, presentation starts with the current state of forests in North Korea. Uh, the current state of uh, forest in the DMZ and the border area, uh, in uh, the uh, history of inter-Korean forest cooperation, uh, in the future direction, uh, in uh, ways for uh, sustainable cooperation in the uh, DMZ and the border area. I think all of you uh, have a lot of interest uh, in unification and the environment. So I think I, I don't think I should get uh, into the uh, details of the uh, forest 
uh, degradation. And what I'd like to emphasize here is that we still have uh, much uh, forests that are not devastated, and we need to maintain it uh, and restore uh, the uh, deforested uh, land. So I'm going to skip these uh, photos. And now there's the uh, vicious cycle of the uh, uh, degradation of forests that starts with uh, the uh, food shortage. Now in uh, North Korea, uh, they have the uh, Ministry of uh, Forestry and the uh, Ministry of Land and the Environment uh, that uh, deal with uh, forest lands. Uh, and with the uh, food shortage, uh, people uh, tend to develop uh, slash and burn uh, fields that leads to natural disasters, leading to uh, more reduced uh, crop yield. Uh, recently, uh, North Korea uh, has uh, implemented uh, reforestation uh, policies and in 2015 uh, North Korea established the uh, Forestry Directorate General uh, under the Ministry of the Land and uh, the Environment uh, as uh, part of its efforts to accelerate uh, reforestation initiatives so they call this uh, reforestation battle. So uh, here are uh, diverse initi initiatives to show you that North Korea is working hard. Uh, in this slide shows the IPCC guidelines on the land cover classification system. And actually, we have done a study uh, where we apply the classification system to uh, North Korea uh, because uh, it is uh, necessary in uh, establishing a master plan of land use in North Korea uh, and uh, for North Korea to uh, secure the uh, resources uh, for our carbon sink. So these are some examples of a uh, deforested uh, land, uh, an unstocked forest in particular. And according to the uh, uh, North Korea's report on its uh, VNR, our analysis of the uh, unstocked forest in North Korea is very similar to uh, their own statistics. Uh, so, uh, to respond uh, to this problem, they are pursuing two initiatives, uh, reforestation of the mountains uh, and greening the urban areas. And uh, taking a look at the uh, satellite images, we can see there is uh, actually some progress. Uh, and this is a map uh, with the um, uh, tree nurseries in spots and the the areas where we see more spots uh, are the areas where uh, deforestation has been most severe so in the west where the population density is higher uh, you see more tree nurseries so North Korea uh, has founded uh, tree nurseries in making uh, progress to some extent so uh, these are some of the photos we took uh, when we visited North Korea. They uh, have uh, a system uh, and equipment, but the problem is that the uh, productivity is lower. And if we are to enhance acceptable, uh, acceptance of North Korea, we need to focus on initiatives to improve productivity. So I'm going to move uh, on and skip some slides on the border area. And in this slide, I want to emphasize 
the uh, characteristics of the DMZ as a corridor. Uh, it is well shown uh, when it comes to the uh, forest areas. Now the uh, South Korean side of the DMZ is about 6.3 million hectares uh, in uh, of that 162,000 hectares are north of the uh, civilian uh, control line. Uh, in about 70% of that uh, is uh, forest land. Uh, in let's take a look at the uh, North Korean side of the DMZ, about 30% uh, of the uh, this area is uh, deforested. Let's move on to the forest management policy uh, in the uh, uh, DMZ between 2016 and 2019. So that was when uh, we implemented the uh, first plan on the forest management uh, in the DMZ. So we uh, increased uh, green area uh, in worked on the conservation of forest by forest biological resources. And uh, we also implemented uh, reforestation for the prevention of forest degradation and disaster. And uh, for the uh, forest management uh, to be sustainable, we have to uh, include the uh, economic aspect. So we uh, also focused on revitalization of the uh, local economy by increasing income for the residents. And um, we have created this uh, DMZ uh, ecology and culture map. Uh, this includes uh, the uh, plants, uh, forest, and uh, residents. We have to include people here uh, for any forest management to be sustainable. Uh, and in 2020, we moved on to the uh, second uh, plan on forest management in the DMC. Uh, in this uh, second plan, we added another aspect, uh, which is uh, the uh, uh, Peace Forestry Initiative and the International Peace Zone in the DMC, uh, which is basically an initiative for conflict management based on forest uh, management. So we are working on uh, the uh, preservation of the uh, forest uh, biodiversity uh, and the uh, prevention of uh, disaster in ecological restoration of forest. Uh, for example, uh, restoring the uh, environment after uh, GPs are dismantled. Uh, third, uh, we are uh, establishing a green forest recorder of peace in the DMC uh, and also other initiatives that follow our previous plans. So there have been inter-Korean forest management uh, that, uh, that has been non-political for many years uh, because no one would think that planting trees are bad. And uh, we have conducted some uh, assessment uh, of the uh, inter-Korean cooperation uh, of the past. Uh, and we found that due to the instability in the inter-Korean relations uh, and limitations in the uh, private cooperation, uh, we were not able to make a lot of progress. Uh, so we uh, believe that uh, we need to establish a stable cooperation mechanism and activation of private sector cooperation for sustained achievement. Uh, and uh, as part of that, uh, we are collecting data and information and analyzing it uh, for a long-term management uh, plan. So with the uh, Panmunjom Declaration, as we all know, uh, there's been inter-Korean uh, consultative meetings on the uh, general um, forestry uh, cooperation, uh, including 
modernization of tree nurseries, uh, joint responses to pregnant wildfire, erosion control initiatives, uh, joint uh, response uh, to disease and insect, and science and technological exchanges in terms of forestry. Uh, so the first uh, such consultative meeting was in 2018, uh, July 2018, and the second one in October 2018. So as part of these initiatives, we visited Mount Gumgang uh, to conduct uh, a research on the uh, uh, disease and uh, insect. And we also uh, conduct, uh, conducted common response uh, against the uh, pine tree uh, nematode uh, and the royal tomb of Wangan. Uh, we have also uh, conducted joint response to wildfire uh, in April 2019. Uh, it's uh, effect. Uh, it is necessary because uh, for firefighting to be effective, both sides uh, of the uh, uh, DMZ uh, must be extinguished, uh, and uh, it's also necessary to prevent uh, any misunderstanding about attacking the other side with fire. And um, uh, more recently, uh, we uh, South Korea uh, has also. Uh, consulted the United States on the uh, reforestation uh, of North Korea. So we have a good um, background uh, for further progress. Now, future directions for uh, inter-Korean management uh, of the forest. Uh, so uh, we can uh, uh, cooperate uh, in terms of te technology, and uh, one part of it uh, would be eco-friendly uh, logging, uh, which is uh, necessary for North Korea uh, to export uh, wood as fuel. So this is the uh, basic um, uh, plan. Now, uh, first of all, Pyongyang, Goseong, and Kaesong, uh, with uh, a huge number of population, uh, should be prioritized in terms of uh, reforestation uh, in, in for that modernization of tree nurseries. And uh, we uh, also need a plan to grow crops in between the trees in uh, forests. And uh, there are other initiatives like the uh, joint preservation of the uh, ecosystem, including the uh, pristine uh, forest uh, in cooperation to respond to wildfire, landslide, disease, and uh, insect. So these are uh, key uh, administrative uh, institutions uh, in the uh, DMZ and the uh, border area. So in Kosong, uh, we have the uh, Peace uh, Tree Nursery. In Yanggu, we have the uh, National Forest Management Office in north of uh, the uh, co civilian control line. Uh, and the uh, National DMZ Wild Plant Nursery. So I'm going to skip uh, some slides. And this is uh, regarding the uh, information analysis I briefly mentioned. Uh, now, there are some differences in the uh, terminology used in both sides. Uh, so we are working on uh, achieving uh, consistency in the terms we use. And um, we are also working on internal capacity building, uh, for example, by developing educational materials on uh, forestry, science, and technology. Uh, so overall, to improve North Korea's acceptance, we have to take North Korean perspective and make such suggestions. 
that are beneficial to uh, North Korean people. Uh, uh, one critical part for that uh, would be uh, during response to uh, forest uh, disasters. And the second, uh, establishing a public-private partnership platform uh, in reinforcing communication. Uh, and third, uh, maybe the Ministry of Unification can decide on this, uh, allowing uh, local governments uh, to uh, implement more initiatives. Thank you very much. Now, um, thank you for keeping the time and apologies. I think forest uh, area cooperation is something that is uh, uh, very practical and that what the North Korea wants, but unfortunately that has been not much progress. Um, we are already on the south side and um, uh, if I go to efforts for insect prevention and other things, it really has tangible result, but due to Con various constraints, it's not moving uh, forward. But I believe uh, once we get the cooperation uh, resumed, this will be the first area that um, we need to tackle. So we will now move on to the second uh, presentation on how to do sustainable co cooperation in the era of climate change. Yes, hello. As introduced, I'm uh, Chu Jang Min from the Korea Environment Institute. You might not really know about KEI, uh, and uh, in August, the uh, uh, law changed. So we used to be uh, Environment Policy Research Institute, but uh, now our name changed to Korea Environment Institute. I'm always saying this. I'm going to say this for one year so that uh, you will get familiar uh, with our name because I'm always loyal to my um, company. Again, um, I'm honored to be part of this forum and to talk about sustainable eco cooperation in the era of um, uh, climate change. So I'm going to talk about three things uh, when it comes to climate change. Of course, uh, focus will be North Korea, but uh, we need to look at all Korean Peninsula to diagnose and offer prospect on uh, climate change. And it's in the context we can discuss of um, uh, South North Korean um, cooperation. So overall, from um, 1980 to 2000, uh, 2000, in terms of temperature and rainfall, uh, North Korea went through uh, more changes than South. So in other words, uh, it had more impact, uh, suffered more impact from climate change. So this is map, and the red uh, dots is the where the area, uh, the, cli cli the temperature is ri rising, and especially in the central part of North uh, Korea, you see a lot of rise in temperature. On the right, you see the average rainfall, and the grayish area is where there is less rainfall. Uh, it's linked to what I'm going to talk about later on, especially in Pyongyangdo and Hangyangdo, um, it has had a lower rainfall. And uh, up to 2040, they say the rainfall will go down. Um, and I'm going to talk about this a bit later. Now, in terms of the um, natural disaster, we had a big flood last year. And since 2010, uh, in the extreme weather conditions, uh, we are suffering uh, natural disasters. One of them is a heat wave. And as you can see from the temperature graph, and again, um, same indication on the North Korean side, as you know, when it, in the era of uh, climate crisis, they have uh, a lot of natural disasters. Um, after Kim Jong-un came to power, they had a severe flood, and even uh, according to the news, uh, they also suffered from that this year. And regionally, how it's distributed, uh, data shows that this is from 2007 to up to uh, this year, and it shows that the number of fatality is about 
of 1,600, and the uh, victims uh, are more to than 2,000. Uh, this is because in 2015 and 2016, there was a massive drought in North Korea. So in uh, and that's why um, the uh, victims of natural disaster increase a lot, and especially on Hangedo, Gangwondo era, and Hangyeong uh, Namdo era, and um, the, they were victimized from natural disasters, mostly coming from flood. And as you know very well, the of the top uh, vulnerable crisis to climate uh, cri uh, vulnerable countries to uh, climate crisis uh, that top co 10 countries uh, did not uh, change um, uh, north korea has always been within top 10 this is an old data but i assume there would have not much of a ch uh, changes so again uh, north korea is always by top 10 and this is interesting because of the medium altitude countries, uh, North Korea is alone. So it's very has unique position of uh, being vulnerable to climate uh, uh, change. Then what will happen going forward? What I can tell you is that you know climate change as the latitude um, uh, goes up, uh, you know there is more climate change. So North Korea compared to South Korea, in terms of rainfall and temperature rise. Um, they have uh, more drastic changes, and they also have more extreme um, weather events. That's the gist. So uh, for the north, uh, for the Korean Peninsula as a whole, com uh, northern side is more vulnerable to climate change. That has been so in the past, also today, as well as into the future. Now, if you see, there is a uh, maps here, and on the right side of the six maps, on the top left is the future estimate forecast and rainfall goes down and all the scenarios like uh, uh, greenhouse gas emission depending on few scenarios uh, in the uh, the emission goes down uh, especially on North Korea side uh, there will have more uh, reduction I'll talk about that a bit later on but anyways overall the rain there is more rainfall the temperature is rising and so there is more volatility uh, and with the greenhouse gases going uh, emission going down uh, there is uh, uh, this type of impact and so I'll skip this area again so this is the future of the climate uh, change and this is from the US data that's been uh, published uh, early uh, this year and this person is now responsible for Biden's environmental policies and uh, we need to really interested why uh, US did this, this type of study so every uh, 100 years they said uh, there's a flood risk risk and because of that, not only residential area, but also military um, facilities uh, due to flood in North Korea, there could be some emission of um, radioactive materials. So traditionally, uh, flood only uh, attacked you know, residential area, but in um, North Korea, it can also attack military uh, facilities because uh, in uh, we do have uh, we can respond to extreme uh, events in South Korea we are ready but not in North Korea another thing is uh, the crisis in ecosystem uh, deforestation and you know worsening ecosystem on the north side and this is not only threatening overall our existence but uh, transmission of disease through animals because animals need to move where the food is. And North Korea, due to economic difficulties, they will further develop the um, uh, forest and uh, damage ecodiversity. And uh, in that process, various infectious diseases could be spread, and um, that could also be uh, transferred to uh, South Korea. And so this is, again, uh, result of cl climate crisis so it's not only hurting the environment but also uh, you know affecting our health so what are the prospects of the climate change in North Korea North Korea alone with the heavy more rainfall 
there will be more damage. And in other words, there will be more damage from extreme weather uh, events. And uh, that could also result in more infectious diseases outbreak. And that will not only hurt North Korea, but would also hurt South Korea. So overall sustainability uh, respond to climate change could be damaged for the peninsula as a whole. So to respond to that urgent situation, we need to cooperate. So then what? where have we been cooperating so far? In 91, from the uh, basic agreement between two Koreas to more recent the Pyongyang Declaration, uh, the uh, cooperation for in the er area of environment has always been included, but um, most has been stopped or you know never um, uh, started. But you know there have been also uh, efforts cooperation for insect prevention for trees and. There have been a conversation to prevent flood in Imjin River, but it has also been stopped. On the local government uh, level, uh, forest area is where we cooperated, and through international agency and third countries, we tried to build their uh, capacity. Uh, so you know, have build uh, more expertise uh, in North Korea. Since the, the most recent uh, South and North Korean summit. Uh, we have also a resumption of various corporations like in terms of uh, chicken farm and poultry farm in the northern side. And uh, we had a project in renewable energy, but that also stopped. And as you know, at the recent uh, two uh, summit, uh, recovery of the ecosystem, they want to do some environmental project, but that has also been uh, suspended. So the, despite the climate change become being an important issue, uh, not much progress uh, uh, has been made in terms of inter-Korean cooperation. It's been mostly suspended. And one thing I really want to mention today is that up to now, when it comes to incorporating environment and forestry, all uh, was uh, discussed as being uh, subsets of um, political military uh, discussion. So uh, if the relationship uh, uh, improves through cooperation in non-military, non-political area, they thought it would help improving political military um, relations. So it's always been tied to economic cooperation, unification efforts. So it will be always become a sub-agenda in achieving the bigger agenda of, uh, you know, uh, in military uh, and um, in political cooperation. But uh, it should be depoliticized and demilitarized because we are talking about the very survival in a uh, Korean peninsula. And it's when you say uh, sustainable existing going forward, it's not only for human, but also animals and plants. So we need to, uh, you know, look at uh, all these different aspects. So, I mean, in terms of uh, going forward with cooperation, yes, there are negative and uh, positive momentums, but uh, to cooperate in climate uh, change, uh, the uh, North Korean sanctions could be an uh, uh, issue. But given that the Biden is trying to have uh, leadership in the cl climate crisis, then um, through net zero activities and others, uh, South Korea maybe um, need to be more actively engaged in working together with uh, uh, Biden so that we can bring uh, South Korea, uh, South North Korea uh, into the discussion to talk about uh, joining together in uh, tackling climate change issues. So in the uh, reducing of the CO2 uh, emission, the target has been set, uh, uh, has been adjusted. Uh, now the uh, we have more uh, ambitious target for uh, international emission uh, uh, control about NDC uh, targets. 
and North Korea also uh, reported uh, about uh, this and um, it says that by 2016 uh, through various efforts uh, they will do this much of reduction but in the revision of uh, NDC in uh, 2019 the goals was adjusted as you see in this table so there's uh, still a lot of room so this one um, could be say there could be uh, room for more cooperation and then there are uh, different political tools we can uh, use for uh, further uh, mitigation. And that would, I believe, allow for further uh, cooperation going forward. And since uh, Kim Jong un uh, government analyzed their, his New Year address and they talked about power generation and energy related uh, issues and natural disasters. Uh, they um, think uh, they are very important. And in September, uh, Kim Jong-un also talked about the um, agriculture and emphasized prevention of natural disaster. So they would be interested in cooperating in these areas as that are the top uh, national agendas. So there is interest in cooperation for climate change um, that interest is this both in South and North Korea. So um, that can help us uh, also in terms of um, guaranteeing a better future for Korean Peninsula. Now, our president is now in Glasgow uh, to attend to the uh, IPCC uh, meeting. And I hear Minister of Unification will go with him. Then I hope that uh, climate change response of North Korea and achieving net zero, um, uh, some pr proposal I hope can be made to the international community to, you know, uh, garner interest from um, international community so that uh, conditions can be matured for internet uh, for uh, bilateral cooperation uh, and since universe minister of unification went there i hope that he served that role uh, and that's my request and hope and through that if international community is interested and supportive there may be some joint declaration can be made between two Koreas. So I really strongly uh, propose that. And on the South Korean side, we need to come up with the right um, uh, framework or uh, process. So maybe we could have some um, programs um, supporting the uh, carbon neutrality or carbon reduction or greenhouse gas uh, reduction. And through that, uh, we can push forward talking about uh, achieving net zero between two Koreas. Thank you very much. So that was a very uh, detailed presentation. And I think the key message here is to uh, enable uh, joint response uh, to climate change uh, based on a life in safety community on the Korean Peninsula. And as the president and the uh, minister of unification is going to uh, the uh, uh, COP in Scotland, uh, that uh, it should be part of the uh, message to the international international society, uh, such a timely suggestion. You know, as a moderator, I'd like to uh, ask this question. So I've heard that more than 1,600 people were, uh, people died because of the uh, flood. And uh, what's the, uh, what's the number of those affected? 23 million, uh, the entire North Korean population? Uh, that includes uh, those affected by droughts as well. So in 2012, it was about 3 million. In 2015, 18 million people. So it means uh, nearly all parts of North Korea uh, were affected by drought. So I was shocked by the number that uh, about 21 million were affected uh, of the uh, total 25 million North Korean population. Now let's invite 
Professor Chang Sokwan of Beijing University, who will talk about uh, joint management of the uh, uh, Inter-Korean Joint River in the era of climate change. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for inviting me to this meaningful forum. Well, I think there are, are three things I uh, failed to think about. First of all, I have created two many slides because I thought I would be given about 30 minutes. Second, I thought that uh, two hours, hours would be enough to uh, get here, but it actually took three hours. Third, well, uh, you know, borrowers and uh, teachers are the ones who are supposed to uh, work standing, but uh, I have to make a presentation uh, uh, in this chair, so I feel a little bit awkward. Uh, anyway, I'm going to skip uh, some uh, overlapping areas and focus on my key aspects. So my major is uh, water resources, water management, uh, drought, flood, and so on. And recently, my research interest uh, is the uh, water management in joint rivers. So we have discussed a lot about inter-Korean cooperation. And I think, uh, what is the uh, general public you think about these uh, theoretical or uh, abstract discussion? So, uh, in terms of politics, when uh, we have a favorable environment, we can uh, pursue many initiatives. But I believe we should be able to uh, continue to implement uh, those initiatives when the relations sour. Uh, in that sense, we need to focus on a more detailed and practical uh, cooperation agenda. So I think inter-Korean cooperation uh, should be based on what North Korea want to get, not what South Korea want to give. Uh, First of all, uh, we have to consider their pride uh, in the uh, uh, justification uh, for such cooperation. Uh, and we should also consider uh, any public uh, resistance uh, to uh, inter-Korean cooperation. You know, uh, recently the Minister of Unification uh, briefly mentioned the possibility of uh, giving uh, COVID-19 vaccines to North Korea, uh, which was met by uh, quite negative response from the general public. So we need to focus on uh, more practical uh, initiatives that can actually work even uh, when the inter-Korean relations sour. And such uh, uh, an example is the management of joint river. So joint rivers uh, are uh, those that uh, run across uh, more than two different states. Now, there are many different principles that can be applied uh, to joint rivers. Uh, it includes um, absolute sovereignty-based approach, uh, but in the end, uh, there is the Helsinki principle that states that the uh, right to use water management should be reasonable and fair. Now, this uh, also sounds quite abstract, but uh, it is important because in many cases, the states located in the more upstream are stronger and richer. Uh, that's the case of the uh, Rio Grande River uh, that runs across the United States and Mexico, uh, and the uh, Mekong River, and There is the uh, Jordan River uh, located in the uh, Golan Plateau, which was one of the uh, reasons for the uh, Middle East War. So how can we uh, treat these issues for uh, joint rivers? So let me skip the uh, climate change scenarios. And I will skip this and only say this will exacerbate this problem uh, of joint river management. I will also skip the border area uh, disasters. Now we have two joint rivers 
uh, the uh, Pukan River and the Imjin River. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about the Imjin River. North Korea uh, has about 63% uh, of it and South Korea about 23%. So North Korea is uh, upstream and South Korea is downstream. And when something happens upstream, uh, we are just left to uh, bear the impact. Now there are five dams in the uh, North Korean side of the uh, Imjin River, the April 5th dam and the Hwanggang dam uh, and so on. And uh, one important thing is that uh, these uh, many dams uh, were constructed in a very short period of time. Uh, in this area uh, of about 8,000 uh, uh, square kilometers. But uh, we have really uh, lacked uh, analysis on the impact of these dams in this area. Uh, and there are also uh, dams in the uh, Bukhan River uh, in uh, including the uh, Dam of Peace and the uh, uh, Imnam uh, Dam in the uh, South Korean side. And we uh, have uh, never uh, analyzed uh, their impact. So there have been some uh, flooding, uh, including the one in 2020 in Choron. Uh, in uh, droughts in uh, many parts of the country uh, throughout the years. And in September 2020, there was the uh, flooding uh, that led to the uh, uh, death of uh, six people uh, in the uh, South Korean side. And uh, on top of the death of these uh, innocent civilians, uh, any inter-Korean cooperation uh, on uh, prevention uh, of uh, flooding uh, was uh, stopped uh, completely. Now, this is actually the only joint river in the world uh, that doesn't have a uh, cooper cooperation committee. So the uh, a problem of the Imjin River is very serious when there is drought. Uh, the uh, uh, stream of uh, the stream flow uh, decreases a lot, and when there is a flood, uh, it's exacerbated in the uh, lower stream. As you can see in this table. Now there is a Hwacheon Dam uh, for um, power generation uh, and the uh, uh, electricity generation decreased by 20% uh, after the uh, construction of the Imnam Dam in uh, North Korea. So that, that's a lot of uh, money loss. And after the uh, construction of the Hwanggang Dam in the Imjin River, uh, the uh, stream flow uh, decreases a lot in the uh, lower stream. And in the summer, the uh, sudden uh, flow into the uh, lower uh, low, uh, uh, downstream uh, in the uh, South Korean side uh, is actually a disaster. We cannot really uh, be prepared uh, for the uh, sudden inflow. Now the uh, flood control uh, capacity uh, in the uh, South Korean side is very small, only one third of what uh, we get uh, from the uh, North Korean side. And why uh, is that the case? Uh, it is because of a regulation uh, in the uh, DMZ. The height of the dam couldn't be higher. Now Gunnam Dam, Hantan Dam, and the Dam of Peace are the three only dams uh, to prepare uh, for a flood. And their capacity 
uh, is very insufficient. And I believe now uh, these three dams uh, cost uh, 5.5 trillion won. And uh, only if we have an effective inter Korean uh, flood cooperation, we could have uh, we can save the money. And uh, if uh, you know uh, North Korea opens the floodgate of the uh, uh, in um, uh, Hwanggang Dam, uh, in uh, the uh, uh, sea level of the Yellow Sea is high, uh, the areas uh, surrounding Paju uh, uh, would be flooded completely. And you know, actually, uh, the intergrain cooperation for flood control is very easy uh, to implement. Uh, in here you see uh, the uh, photo of the uh, Hwanggang Dam. And I was uh, a surprise uh, to see that because that uh, dam was built with concrete and sand uh, mixed together, which is very weak and susceptible to uh, climate change in the future and earthquake. But uh, here uh, we cannot conduct any uh, safety uh, analysis of the dam. So every year we have these lot of uh, adverse impacts. Now Innam Dam and the uh, piece of uh, Dam of Peace have no other function uh, than preparing for uh, a flood caused by the Hwanggang Dam. Now other uh, dams uh, are multi-purpose uh, for power generation uh, and so on. Uh, now the uh, Imnam Dam uh, in North Korea uh, can store uh, 2.6 uh, tons, uh, 2.6 uh, billion uh, square meter uh, uh, tons of water. Uh, actually, uh, the dam uh, became taller and taller because of the inter-Korean competition. Uh, and the uh, dam of peace also got taller and taller, and uh, it is now capable of uh, preventing flood uh, from the uh, floodgate of the uh, Imnam Dam. Now, despite some controversy, uh, now uh, North Korea cannot effectively attack South Korea with the uh, Imnam Dam. And if the floodgate of the uh, Dam of Peace is uh, closed, uh, the uh, uh, area called uh, Kumsongchan in North Korea will be flooded completely. However, the case is uh, different for Hwanggang Dam and Gunnam Dam because the Gunnam Dam is not large enough uh, to uh, prepare for uh, the uh, Hwanggang Dam's uh, uh, a flood caused by uh, Hwanggang Dam. And uh, the flood uh, can actually impact a much larger area, including Seoul, as you saw here. So although I'm not really an expert on this, uh, North Korea's uh, approach to uh, the water management in its uh, VNR report, North Korea uh, also focuses on sanitation uh, in the water supply. So while North Korea works on to improve its sanitation and water supply, what should we do? Now there is this concept of a stream flow uh, to maintain uh, rivers. And uh, with these uh, dams in North Korea, uh, we might actually uh, fall short of that. <coughs> uh, in, if North Korea decides to uh, store water 
uh, in the, those sands. But actually, South Korea can get much more economic benefit if the same amount of water is stored in the dams in South Korea. So we can choose to do so in a uh, reward uh, North Korea. So this is my suggestion uh, of sharing benefits between uh, the two sides. So this uh, is based on uh, calculation in I think uh, we can get about uh, 50 billion uh, won in benefits uh, from uh, uh, flood control, and we can uh, reward North Korea with just 10 percent of that. And this is what I uh, call water sanitation trade. Uh, this can be also acceptable by uh, North Korea because sanitation is such a critical uh, area it's uh, focus focusing on. Now, uh, sanitation is also uh, part of the uh, key uh, humanitarian assistance area. And if North Korea uh, is not going to uh, take food because it's so proud, uh, we can reward it uh, with uh, sanitation. So if you're going to uh, implement really effective and pr uh, practical uh, cooperation initiatives with North Korea, uh, we can uh, choose uh, the uh, joint uh, water management. Uh, now this uh, water sanitation trade uh, can also uh, avoid the uh, sanctions of the uh, UN Security Council. I want to uh, emphasize once again uh, that the uh, Imjin River is the only ri joint river uh, in the world where the two sides don't have a uh, joint uh, management committee. I think uh, w uh, we have some uh, officials from the uh, Ministry of uh, Unification. Uh, I hope you can also work on uh, this initiative because it's a critical and it can avoid the UN sanctions. Thank you very much. Well, sorry to rush you. Um, I also been rushed two times now. So, I mean, I'm learning for the first time today that there is no organization overseeing the common uh, river system. So before we talked about, you know, having better inter-Korean relations to, for our survival, uh, we need to have that. And I think that is a very uh, dire situation and that is very necessary. We'll now go to the last uh, presentation. Director Kim Dam uh, of the Gosan Culture Foundation talk about how to explore and uh, share social cultural resources along the border area. And uh, please, uh, 15 minutes. Hello. Uh, Kim Dam, I'm from uh, Gosong of Gangwon-do province. I'm a director of the uh, Gosong uh, Culture Foundation. A lot of people talked about uh, big topics, but uh, I live in Gosong of Gangwon-do province, and this there is a uniqueness of this um, area. We talk a lot about the fairy and woodcutter. You know this as a children's uh, story. And if we say Gosong, uh, you might think about Unification Observatory. And if you go there, there is an explanation about Kamho. And this is uh, where the legend of the fairy and woodcutter uh, is. Uh, and that's where I want to start my uh, presentation. I uh, wrote this uh, in a text format, and I will have only uh, photos. So if you see the program book, you can read what I wrote. And um, again, if there's not much time, then uh, you could just refer to my uh, text. Then you will understand what I'm trying to say. But uh, what I want to say is uh, writer Tommy Orange, uh, Indian father and white 
uh, mother, and uh, has, he has that, and he's a young um, writer, and talks about uh, Indians living in uh, cities, and in that his um, novel, he talks about I drew a clear line on inland, and that resulted in a uh, big uh, chasm that cannot be crossed over. So uh, I said I live in Kosong, and Kosong is a uh, area where um, it's uh, between uh, uh, North and South Korea. So I really felt what he said. So where did a fairy and woodcutter meet? That is the title of my um, uh, submission uh, text. And the uh, this observatory uh, opened in 83. And when there was a groundbreaking for observatory, they started to talk about Kamo. And if you look from the Unification Observatory theory, you see the Kamo and the stone there, which is called Kusambong. And we call it Kamo uh, Peaks. And then we also have on the right side, Hegem River. And since 83, it's Kamo with the resin of the fairy and woodcutter. And what I uh, wrote here is from various uh, newspapers. The fairy and woodcutter uh, stories that I um, captured. And uh, I said Kamo started to appear from 83. And there is a commission committee on five provinces on North Korea. And there, uh, we have also people born in northern side of Kamo. And I actually served as a guide of the Unification Observatory. And I said, uh, introduce Kamo that has legend of fairy and woodcutter. And that person was really angry hearing me say that. He said it, that was not Kamo. So that's what I know, I told him. And he said, everybody uh, knows this, but nobody corrects it. It's not Kamo. And he yelled. And at that time, I started my research to find exactly where it is. So if you see newspaper from Japanese colonial times, like a uh, visit to the Kumgang Mountain and residents coming from the Kingam Mountain, uh, says it's all from Paldam. And before that, it was Onjongni and Bunjuam. And then Onjongni and Bunjuam started to appear. And it's all within one valley area. So if you visit Kumgang San Mountain, then you talk about Sangpaltam, and Sangpaltam is uh, there's eight uh, dams or lakes in Yoyangsan Mountain also, and in the it's in the upper area, and that's why it's called uh, Sangpaltam. So, and this is again within one valley. Onjongni Munjudam, and with the stones blocking this area, the legend goes to Sangpaltam, and Kamo is a Hegungang area, but this is Negungang area, so different um, area, and in seventies in. Uh, Post stamp series, they mention about fairy and woodcutter, and also in drama series. In this, uh, they all say it's in Kungangsa uh, a fairy and woodcutter lived. And with the opening of the uh, Unification Observatory in 83, to go into that observatory, you need to notify your um, access to that um, area and even had the 
30 minutes security tra training that you need to receive and go by the bus to the observatory and within the observatory you only need to follow the uh, guide so at the time ferry and wood cutter uh, it's a resident from Kumgangsan, but the visible area of Kumgangsan is from uh, Kamo, and that's why the story turned uh, to be originating from um, Ko uh, Kamo. So, Unification Observatory was used for, unif for security training and you had to follow a military guide and they started to say the story was from uh, Kamo. But we know that it's not true anymore. So we need to correct the story, but nobody's really uh, doing that. So even my books and in the books of the Ministry of Unification say Kamo is the place of uh, fairy tale and woodcutter story. Uh, so I think uh, uh, what belongs to uh, Paltam uh, should now uh, go to Paltam. Now uh, Bosong uh, is now uh, divided into the south and the north. But uh, after unification, uh, people can uh, you know uh, talk about uh, this uh, issue in a more easy manner. Thank you very much. You know I have visited Bosong a few times. So I'd like to uh, talk about this. In 1592, uh, there was the uh, Hideyoshi uh, invasion, and uh, there were Buddhist monks who organized the uh, uh, Patriotic Militia. Uh, and um, many of those monks uh, were from uh, these uh, Buddhist temples uh, in this area, including uh, Mount Kumgang. And there was this temple called Yujongsa uh, that had about 700 monks uh, who were organized into that militia. And the other uh, temple called Gwonbongsa uh, had about 5,000 monks. So uh, this uh, temple uh, was a key uh, temple in fighting the uh, Japanese invasion. And whenever I tell this story to North Koreans, they uh, then talk about uh, the uh, Sosandesa, uh, uh, also well-known uh, Buddhist monk uh, who uh, was uh, in the uh, Buddhist temple uh, in Mount Myohyang. So this leads to uh, an interesting conversation. So uh, many of these uh, historical stories are based on facts, uh, others uh, on our uh, wishes. And you know, when you, you uh, Uh, go to uh, Sokcho, the uh, people there uh, want to use water uh, flowing from the uh, Namgang River, which is about 80 kilometers long, uh, in which uh, actually leads to the area north of uh, Mount Gumgang. Uh, so this can be yet another example uh, of inter-Korean um, cultural exchange. And I think that was when why uh, the uh, last speaker uh, talked about this uh, issue of fairy tale. Now let me invite uh, a uh, farmers movement uh, activist to uh, talk about uh, his thoughts. Now uh, I'm Kim Yong bin uh, chairman of the Education Organizing Committee of the uh, Choron County, uh, County Farmers Association. Uh, so from this morning, I uh, learned a lot from the discussion. So uh, listening to these uh, discussions, I thought of many things I want to do with North Koreans, uh, but uh, there are many challenges we have to overcome for that. 
uh, and I learned that there is a lot of interest in the uh, DMZ. And uh, listening to that, I wanted to say that we have to cross uh, a boundary in our mind. Maybe we have been uh, in the box for too many years when it comes to inter-Korean uh, cooperation. So I'm often frustrated uh, as, uh, as a resident of uh, Cheolon, uh at the uh, discussion uh, about development and uh, conservation. And this discussion often leads to uh, somebody concluding that development and con uh, conservation uh, should be pursued um, simultaneously. But I believe that uh, we need to sacrifice one for the other. You know, there have been discussions on uh, smart city projects or solar power uh, projects uh, for this area. And some of the residents in Cholon uh, say they want to attract plants. Actually, they do not really like uh, planter factories, uh, but it's because of the uh, uh, inactive uh, local economy. So I think we need to be more honest about these contradictions uh, in what we say. So with the uh, 70 years of national division, this uh, corridor or belt of life uh, from Gosong through Cheolon, Yanggu, and uh, then Kimpo uh, has been preserved. Uh, and I think, uh, to be honest, uh, we should uh, just talk about uh, conservation of this belt. And I really hope that uh, the pattern of our discussion can change. Now, these areas are uh, rural areas uh, and border areas. So under this uh, dual uh, pressure, uh, these areas are short of budget and uh, people, uh, actually. So, for these areas uh, to uh, be really developed, they need people coming in to live there. Uh, it cannot be just solved uh, by building uh, some offices or attracting organizations. Uh, uh, people uh, should uh, think that, well, uh, it can be worth giving a shot in living in those areas. Now, to live in these areas, uh, you have to become a farmer, but it's uh, really challenging these days. Uh, there are import uh, agricultural produce, uh, and there's labor shortage. So I believe uh, that the government uh, should purchase uh, mandatorily uh, the uh, uh, agricultural produce in this uh, border area uh, and then supply it for uh, school meals uh, and uh, military uh, meals. But uh, recently, the uh, competitive bidding uh, obligation is uh, hampering uh, such uh, procurement. And I also believe that the central government uh, should guarantee uh, basic income for people in this area. Uh, we should uh, rec we should just uh, admit that it's just unrealistic uh, to say that uh, residents in this uh, in these areas uh, have to live uh, on their own with some income uh, enhancement programs. So until uh, the border area becomes self. Uh, reliant and economically active, uh, we need those initiatives. Now, there are many uh, people in uh, the South uh, who want to implement joint uh, initiatives with North Korea, but uh, we need to consider uh, the difference of the uh, economic and social systems between the two sides. Uh, North Korea uh, is based on uh, collective uh, system in South Korea is a capitalist market system. 
And if uh, the two sides are unified, uh, it's going to lead to a lot of uh, confusions. Uh, we need to start thinking about how to resolve and harmonize the two different systems from now. Uh, we shouldn't be forcing the other side uh, to accept ours. Uh, and I think today we need to focus on what we can do uh, best uh, ourselves. And I think we need to analyze some European examples uh, where capitalist and socialist systems are uh, well harmonized. Uh, and we can apply uh, such model to the border area first as part of preparing for unification. So so uh, there is some discussion regarding the uh, uh, public ownership of land and there is a lot of uh, people suffering from the uh, housing uh, crisis. And I think as part of resolving that uh, problem uh, as well, we can apply the uh, public ownership system of land to the border area first. I think uh, we already have uh, the uh, um, conditions uh, to apply a public ownership system of land uh, in the areas, including Choron. Uh, the land uh, price is much lower than other parts of the country. Uh, but there are many uh, landlords uh, from other areas, our areas who have bought off uh, much of the lands here. So in under these circumstances, if we have unification, uh, the original uh, residents who have uh, lived in this area for a long time uh, would be once again uh, forced out of this area. So we have to prevent that. And I also hope that uh, we need to establish a national uh, ecological park in this area. Uh, it should be a park where the 25 million residents of Seoul in the Gyeonggi province uh, can visit uh, for a few days for recreational purposes. Now, uh, Choron uh, became, uh, Choron was, uh, Choron is not uh, part of the uh, uh, north of the uh, civilized control line. Uh, and with that, there were some changes in the Choron County. Uh, we now have more uh, livestock uh, industry and less farmland. Uh, and actually, this caused less migratory birds like cranes uh, coming to uh, the uh, Choron. So I think both, uh, I think also for uh, ecological reasons, we can designate a buffer zone. In other words, uh, we should uh, talk about unification uh, with uh, based on respect between uh, North and the South uh, with trust. In, in closing, you know, in uh, winter, there are many migratory birds uh, coming to this area. Now, there are tens of uh, thousands of uh, cranes uh, coming here. And recently, I was surprised uh, to see that these uh, migratory birds are now closer uh, to uh, people. Uh, they used to uh, fly away uh, when I uh, when I was uh, driving on the roads. Uh, these days, those cranes are maybe 
uh, less than uh, 20 meters uh, away uh, from me. And uh, these days, I can even see uh, their eyes uh, in a very close distance. So what does this mean? The farmers didn't threaten these birds, and they now uh, seem to uh, recognize uh, the fact that this is their land uh, in shelter, and maybe uh, that led to some kind of trust between them and us. Thank you very much. Well, so the geese flying so near, but nobody gets uh, uh, surprised. That's interesting. Now, we have up to 4.40, so we have about two or three minutes left. So we will maybe accept comment or question from the floor, and then I'll give you a wrap-up uh, comment. So any comment? Nothing? Yes, um, I'm Tim Yujo. I'm from the Peace uh, Public uh, Cooperative um, Association. Um, thank you for very nice presentations today. And um, I think the young people can now be more interest in, interested in uh, unification, and I hope um, this forum serves to a dead end. Personally, I saw the really uh, importance of cooperation, but being uh, focused on cooperation is important, but you also need to not lose sight on the importance of sustainability and sustainable um, cooperation. So I have a question to uh, Dr. Chu, Zhang Min. Actually, in the border area of DMZ, uh, there's a lot of political uh, surprises, and there is also we cannot so be free from the uh, economic uh, interest. So, do you have any proposals to further uh, cooperation environment area given such a constraint? And um, anything of two Korea school can do toward that end? Thank you for the question. Now, uh, when it comes to climate change, uh, political, social, economic drivers exist for uh, cooperation. But I believe when it comes to climate change, that it's um, linked to our survival of our people. So it's all about. Uh, so we need to approach that uh, as is this issue as a kind of um, for uh, in being important for our survival and uh, climate change and you know the carbon issues. It's too politicized. They are um, refusing to see the facts and reality. Uh, so I hope at least between two Koreas when we come to cooperate for climate change, it will not be politicized, but really. Keep, keep focus for the survival of our people. I hope that type of strategic positioning can be taken so that we can have a sincerely um, positive result through this cooperation. So let us uh, wrap up the session uh, with some uh, closing uh, comments from me. So we have four speakers and one uh, discussant. And um, I don't think I can uh, summarize all their discussions. Instead, I'm going to just share some of my thoughts. So we need to create a sustainable world. And it requires a lot of work in all aspects. And what's critical is uh, the people who work for that. So there can be policies of the central and local governments. And the people who actually implement those policies uh, for the uh, sustainable uh, DMZ and the war area are residents in this area. They are uh, the ones 
uh, who have to lead uh, all those policies. So residents uh, taking ownership is much more critical than the central government pouring in more and more money. So the residents in the area uh, should be uh, the champions of sustainability. And uh, although we often neglect the soldiers uh, should be part of that. Uh, but as I often say, that's not the case in reality. Now we need a partnership between the civilian government and a military. Uh, and in any such partnership, uh, the civilians uh, should take the lead. Now, there are many policies, and they do not achieve their uh, goals. Uh, and the government, uh, uh, the government often resort to using more money uh, to gain some short-term support from the uh, communities. So, uh, once again, I'd like to emphasize that the residents in the, these communities in the border area uh, should take the lead. Uh, and we should record the success and progress of those initiatives and suggest to North Korea that uh, we need to work together to expand uh, these initiatives. Uh, that way, we can uh, create a community of life uh, and safety, as uh, Dr. Chu said. So once again, let's realize that all uh, lives are closely related to one another, uh, and we should be the champions of creating that world. I believe all the discussions we had today uh, were uh, sharing the same uh, theme, and the uh, those in the floor uh, all wish the same. So once again, let's become the champions of the uh, peace uh, and ecological community on the Korean Peninsula. Thank you.